Hello, APE students. This is Ms. Wenzel coming at you. We did not quite have enough time to really get through the material I wanted in class on energy, so instead I'm going to have you guys watch this keynote presentation, take notes on it, just like if, as if we were in class, pause when you need to, and then I'd also like you to, any questions that I ask verbally, or any questions that are written on the screen, make sure those questions are highlighted in bold in your notes and you've answered them. So that's going to be my check for your homework. Um, so this is on energy and it's based off your Barron's Chapter 8 notes that you took and hopefully it'll just be a different way of hearing about it or looking at it and help you learn it a little bit more in depth. Um, so first let's just talk about what the heck energy is. I think we all kind of have an intrinsic understanding but energy is measured in what we call joules so joules are um, are a measurement of what something is able to do and if we associate that with a time frame like seconds or hours or days um, then we can call that power so the amount of joules per second is called a watt so if you look at like a light bulb for example you might see like the top of a light bulb might, might say 60 watts. So that's the power it's pulling from your electricity in your house as it operates. Um, the most common unit of power is going to be kilowatt hours. We see this a lot on the AP exam free response questions. You've already seen this multiple times. So it's not how many watts you're using in an hour, but how many kilowatts you're using in an hour. And if you forgot what kilo means, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and there's different forms of energy, mechanical energy, energy from heat, thermal energy, energy from chemicals breaking apart or forming, um, electrical energy, nuclear energy, electromagnetic, just in general. Um, so let's talk for a second about what kilo means. The prefix kilo, it should be pretty familiar to you as part of the metric system. So just this is one of my questions for you. What does kilo mean? So jot down, maybe pause here and jot down what you think it means and see if you can fill in this equation. One kilowatt equals how many watts? Hopefully you got that one kilowatt equals a thousand watts. The prefix kilo means a thousand. Another way of writing a thousand, which you'll see in the AP exam, is ten to the third. These are really convenient ways of writing numbers because it actually tells you how many zeros are part of the number? Three. So one, two, three, one thousand. How about mega? That's another unit you might see. You might see something like a megawatt. How many watts are in one megawatt? Hopefully you got a million. Mega means a million. So that would be ten to the six, six zeros. So one megawatt equals one million watts. Now think for a second, here's another question, how many kilowatts are in one megawatt? So let's just go back for a second, Ch basically write down this equation, but instead of writing watts, write kW or kilowatts. One megawatt equals how many kilowatts? And I'm not going to answer that question, I want you to answer that in your notes. Um, and here's a sample um, question that I'd like you to take a stab at. I'm going to talk you through it a little bit. Um, and then I want you to do this in your notes. Um, Theropeville is a rural community. What does rural mean again? Countryside. And it has a population of 8,000 homes. Um, it gets its electricity from a coal burning power plant. That power plant's capacity could put its power is 20 megawatts and the average home in that community consumes 10,000 kilowatt, out, kilowatt hours of electricity per year. Residents pay that much per kilowatt, 12 cents, um, and we're actually not going to get to the second part of this question, so we'll just stop there. Oopsies. So A, the existing power plant runs 8,000 hours per year. Now, um, don't get confused. This 8,000 up here had to do with the number of homes. Completely different. So this doesn't really have to do with the number of homes. The existing power plant runs 8,000 hours per year. How many kilowatt, kilowatt hours of electricity is the current plan capable of producing? So what I need you to look for now is we need to know something about the current power plant. How much power does it put out? 
If we can figure out that, we can calculate how much over 8,000 hours it would put out. So let's look up here for a piece of information that tells us something more about that specific power plant. Okay, so hopefully you got that the power plant's capacity is 20 megawatts. All right, so jot that down. That's your first piece of information you're going to need to use. Okay, so actually I think it's the only one. So uh, 20 megawatts, except for I can already tell my answer needs to be in what units? Kilowatt hours. So here's the basic outline. This is what you're going to have to do in your notes. Take 20 megawatts and convert that, show your work, convert that 20 megawatts into kilowatts. Okay? Convert the 20 megawatts into kilowatts. And then you can easily, once you have the kilowatts, you know that it's going to run for 8,000 hours. So if if it's using um, if it's using if it's once you figure out the kilowatts, um, if it's using that many per hour, how many in 8,000 hours? You're just going to have to basically multiply, and that'll give you the kilowatt hours the current plant. Oops, not plan plant is capable of producing. So pause here and do that in your notebook. B. How many kilowatt the same question, part of the same question. How many kilowatt hours of electricity do the residents of Thorpeville consume in one year? Okay, so we need to use some of the other information here. We need to notice that there are um, 8,000 homes. You need that p piece of information. And we know that the average home consumes 10,000 kilowatt hours per year. So using that information, you should be able to easily answer question part B. So um, do that for a second. And part C, I want you to compare what you just did and just in a couple sentences, what conclusions can you make? So think about this just logically. In part A, you wrote down how much um, kilowatt hours the plant can actually produce. And in part B, you wrote down how many, um, how much each, how much the, the city actually uses. So which one of those is greater? And does that tell you anything about alternatives the city might have or ways of making money the city might have? So just think through that and what can, just describe what conclusions you can make. All right, next, uh, you, you've seen this a few times in the AP exam. You might see it. Um, it does actually appear often. It's BTUs. You don't need to know this, but it stands for British Thermal Unit. It is the unit of energy that's used in the U.S. So in the U.S., they don't use joules very often. Um, instead, they'll say BTUs. But don't get confused. A BTU is still just a measure of energy. Okay. And then if you look at this last statistic, you don't need to memorize this either, but one watt, which is a unit of power, is equal to about 3.4 BTUs per hour. Okay. So um, this is just giving you conversion, showing you that BTUs represent energy, BTUs per hour represent power, and it's just a different conversion, but just think of it as unit of, units of energy. Um, really quickly, I'm going to go over the law of thermodynamics. There sometimes is a specific question on it, but it's good to understand in general. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Um, it might seem like um, energy is being created or destroyed, like, for example, when you light something on fire, it seems to be producing energy in the form of fire. But actually what you're doing is converting the energy that's already in the thing you're burning, and you're converting it into a different form of heat energy and light energy. So you didn't actually create it or destroy it, you just changed forms. So energy is never created or destroyed, it just changes forms. Um, the second law of thermodynamics, let's read that. When energy is converted from one form to another, a less useful form results. So basically what it's saying is it when we use energy it's really inefficient. Really inefficient. So for example when we burn coal to produce um, heat and uh, produce electricity a lot we actually waste a lot we actually we accidentally lose a lot as heat and don't convert that to electricity. So energy it can never be recycled to a higher quality. We lose about it. For example 20 percent energy in gasoline is converted to mechanical energy. The other 80% is lost as heat. So it's just a law stating that um, using energy is inefficient. So energy can't be created or destroyed. And second law, energy is inefficient. 
Um, so just a brief history of energy use in the world, how humans get their energy. So the first primitive humans that discovered fire used wood as their energy source and they burned it to produce heat. Now we have uh, maybe found some more efficient uses. The next thing we found was coal and this was the industrial revolution. We use coal and it propelled the industrial revolution because coal is so densely packed with energy it was much better than wood to burn and produce a lot of energy at once. Um, the next thing we found was p petroleum or oil and that was about the mid 1900s that started to take off and that had had different uses but it was um, an easy form of energy as well and could produce a lot of energy high, high net yield. And then finally more recently we've started to use natural gas a little bit more we don't rely completely on petroleum or oil um, and we use coal a little bit more and this has been in the late 1900s maybe the 80s and 90s. Um, so who uses the most energy? Industries, transportation, and then uh, residents, us and our houses and stores for commercial use. Um, so the U.S. imports a lot of their oil and the U.S. actually accounts for 20 percent of global world consumption of petroleum which compared to the U.S. population that's very extreme. So um, next topic I want to talk about is just non-renewable versus renewable energy sources. So can you, can you maybe describe what a non-renewable energy source is? What does it mean to be non-renewable? I want you to write this question down, pause here, and, and um, share your thoughts. All right, hopefully you wrote down something about, to the effect of this energy source um, cannot be replaced quickly. For example, coal takes thousands and thousands of years to form, um, and yet we burn it so quickly. Coal is not being renewed or remade fast enough to replace what we're consuming. So that's kind of the key for non-renewable energy sources. Now, can you name any examples? I just gave you one. Non-renewable energy sources. Basically, they would be the, the ones we use the most of. Coal, petroleum, which is oil natural gas, propane, and uranium. Uranium is the energy source that's used for nuclear energy. The rest of these are hydrocarbon sources found in the earth. How about a renewable source of energy? What's the difference here? What does it mean to be renewable? All right, hopefully you wrote down something to the fact that it's replaced as fast as, as, fast as it is used. So um, it can be sustainable in a way. We're not using it up. And it doesn't mean it can't be used up. Um, it just means that it can be replaced or regrown fast enough and we call it renewable. And when we talk about renewable energy, which we will at the end of this presentation, we're talking about biomass, geothermal energy, hydropower, solar energy, wind energy, and the like. Um, the problem right now is that globally we're using non-renewable sources. We rely on oil and natural gas. Um, and just for you to know, jot down and make sure you understand that natural gas is, um, is actually methane gas. It's the same thing. When we say natural gas, we mean methane. So one of the question I have for you now is, what is methane? What's the chemical formula for methane? This is important for you to know. You should know this. So if you don't know, look it up and write this down in your notes and highlight that question I just asked. Okay? And then the other thing we re rely on is coal. So how are these formed? They're formed over a long period of time. They're formed by decomposition of really ancient stuff. Plants that died, uh, animals that have died, they, their, their organic matter gets compressed and they're closer to the center of the earth under high temperature and pressure. They get converted to these energy sources we have today. Um, the problem is these can run out and these will run out if we don't find different ways to do this. But it is going to be difficult to change because everything we have set up in our society like gas stations, um, are all run on these energy sources. Um, I want you, if you could for a second, I want you to think of um, why, reasons why it would be really difficult to change. Um, as many specific examples like gas stations that you can think of. Um, and that's going to end my first video because I have a 15 minute time limit and I will, I will do the rest of this presentation in my next video.